Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in today's one we're unboxing or unwrapping another Cash Converters pre-built PC. This one cost me £99.99, pence, the equivalent of $122 US dollars or €116. Euros. This one is from the Coventry branch, whose service I cannot fault. I only paid for standard delivery and it turned up within a couple of days. They even sent me an email letting me know they had sent it and it wasn't even a template. Delightful. I was very excited about this one because for the price, the specs sounded pretty solid, though they weren't completely specific. This second-hand system was advertised as an in-win desktop PC with a 3.5GHz FX processor, 8 gigs of RAM and an RX 460 graphics card. It also came with a 12 month repair warranty. As I'd soon find out, and as you will shortly too, there were a few unexpected surprises in store. First though, the looks and condition. This old in-wing case looks really good, in my opinion, though as expected with any used system, there is a bit of dust and a few blemishes. That's not a problem for me, as it's what I always expect, but overall it's still a good looking enclosure and quite striking with the side panel off, reason being the luminous green highlights. Inside the case there was more bubble wrap, which I was informed of post-purchase via the aforementioned email. As I began to remove what seemed like an endless amount of protection, the first surprise was staring back at me in the form of a Noctua cooler. I later found out that this model, or maybe a newer revision of it, still sells for over £60 online, and the fan alone is 20 so not a bad start. That's half the cost of this machine back from one component alone. That said, I've always wanted one of these fans, so I purchased a cheap socket 1700 mounting kit and I'll be slapping it atop my i3-12-300. Next, I began tugging on the hard drive drawers in an attempt to remove them so that I could see what model the 500GB HDD was. Enter surprise number two. This was described as having a single 500 gig hard drive, but nowhere did it mention the 128 gigabyte Samsung SSD or the secondary 320 gigabyte HDD. These aren't particularly costly extras, but it's always nice to get something you're not expecting. Don't quote me on that, there are more than a few exceptions, but yeah, let's move on. As I continued to look around the case, it was nice to see that the cable management wasn't too bad and there were no concerning adapters powering anything like in the last build. That said, I did continue to wonder about the power supply and after noticing the broken switch, I just had to see whether or not I was bothered by this problem or whether it was irrelevant because the whole unit would soon end up in the bin. Turns out, it was the latter. I've never owned a power supply with the brand name Power Supply before, and I don't plan to ever again. It's powered the system for who knows how long so far, so I mean it must be okay to some degree, but the installed graphics card doesn't exactly push this thing because it doesn't require a power connector, so that makes this unit's job easier, I'm sure. Now it does have a six pin GPU connector though, so you could hook up a more powerful graphics card, but yeah, I don't trust it. I'll use it for today's test, but I won't be relaxed while doing so, that's for sure. Moving on to the graphics card now, which is held in place by these screwless clips. I do like a screwless design case. It makes things easier to remove and upgrade. Please ignore the fact that the card has still been screwed in regardless. Now, it was described as an RX 460, an entry level GPU from 2016. They came in two or four gigabyte variants and of course I was hoping for the four gigabyte card, but it wasn't meant to be. What we got was the two gigabyte Sapphire version, which will be more limited in games, but still for the price of the system as a whole, it's not a bad inclusion. Could have been worse, it could have been a GTX 460. Now speaking of gaming performance, I was also concerned to find a single 8GB stick of 1600MHz DDR3. Not the end of the world, there are three more slots so there is an upgrade path there, but I'd always recommend going dual channel no matter the system that you're building. So far we've had a couple of nice surprises and a couple of not so great discoveries. With the mystery of the CPU still unsolved, it was time to wipe off the thermal paste and take a closer look. Now the Cash Converters website said a 3.5GHz FX processor, so 
I assumed it would be an FX 6300. What I didn't consider, however, was the FX 8000 lineup, and it just so happened that underneath the caramel and toffee coloured cooler sat an FX 8320, a top of gigabyte GA970A UD3P board. I got more than I expected from this system, though I sort of also expected the generic PSU because people skimping on power supplies is still more common than it should be. Always budget for a decent PSU, no matter what system you're building. I think that just about covers everything. Oh, there's also a DVD drive in here as well, but that didn't actually have a power connector going to it. I hope the previous owner knew this and wasn't wondering why their discs weren't reading. Can you imagine? With the PC inspected and critiqued, the next thing to do was power it on, which it did just fine. Now, despite my constant sweating, partly because I filmed this on the hottest day of the year and partly because I was worried about the PSU exploding, there was no moisture damage caused by me either, so we were ready to go. CPU temps were fine, and there were no artifacts or issues with the graphics card. That said, there was another problem. During gaming tests, the system kept switching off, and my first thought was the power supply, so of course I swapped it out, but it happened again. I decided to swap out the motherboard as well, just for the game tests, and once I did that, there were no more issues. Keep in mind the temperature readings for the CPU are inaccurate, they're too low. I had to use the same board as I used with the X6-1090T in a previous video, and the same thing happened with the temperatures there. So just ignore the CPU temps. Now it's fair to say that the single stick of RAM wasn't doing us any favours, but the FX8320 and RX460 aren't exactly all too capable these days. I'd say the main performance problems here were due to the 2GB460 though, but nonetheless adding another 1600MHz DDR3 module brought up the 1 and 0.1% low figures a little bit, so again I'd recommend two 8GB sticks as a minimum in 2022. If you manage your expectations in terms of graphical settings, then this card and CPU combo will still do okay, offering up a plus 30 FPS average in a lot of games. Newer titles may require a resolution sacrifice as well, either in the form of a native drop or via the help of FSR for example. I think the FX8320 has a lot more life in it than the 460, I think you'll be able to get away with using this CPU longer in a system than you will the GPU, but we'll just have to see how things progress and change in terms of AAA gaming over the next few years. The 4GB 460 would certainly have been a better choice for this build though. As I continued to test some games, I couldn't help but wonder why the included motherboard wasn't working properly. Maybe the CPU had been overclocked in the past and the board had taken the brunt. I continued to wonder this before I put the system back to how it was, just in the hope that things might work properly this time around, and when I did this, sure enough, the problem was gone. Seriously, I played for a few hours, testing all different games, and not once did the system shut down. I even hooked up the old power supply again, and it still ran fine. I'm sorry I doubted you, even if you do make me nervous. Maybe a power connection from the unit to the board was loose or something when I first tested it out and I didn't see it. Who knows? All I do know is that the problem had gone away and I did return to a few of the same games and rerun the benchmarks, but nothing changed. The motherboard had no impact on the frame rates and only negligible changes on the frame times. So yeah, not a straightforward all in all with today's cash converters PC, but after a few pleasant surprises, a small issue that worked itself out in the end it didn't bother me too much. The amount of times a problem has resolved itself on its own without me diagnosing it is quite ridiculous, but welcome to the world of computers. Overall, Cash Converters Coventry did a good job with handling and shipping, and the system builder, wherever you are, did a good, solid job on the build, apart from when it came to choosing a power supply. Please don't skimp on PSUs, no matter how little power you think your graphics card might need. Thanks for watching this one then. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.